The Z8 has been released on the market and it's been doing fantastic. Now, some of us have been wishing for a cinema camera from Nikon and with Nikon saying that they're going to be focused more on video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about what a potential cinema camera or purely video camera from Nikon could look like. So let's dive in and discuss it. If you're a video shooter, you know full well the Nikon Z6 and Z7 didn't satisfy most Nikon users when it came to video. Yes, the camera could output RAW, but you'd have to send it off to get that done and paid for that feature. It took Nikon a while to finally get around to giving us a proper video camera, but that ended up being the Z9, which was out of reach for a lot of people. At $5,500, it did undercut a lot of the other competition out there, and it was an excellent camera. So now we have the Z8. The Z is a great camera, also has the same features as the Z9, but still on the pricey side for most people. Sony has long been producing video cameras. This is the FX30. The FX30 came out priced at $1,800. And a lot of us, including myself, went out and bought one. If you're brand agnostic, you just want something that can get the job done. And this camera was that camera. That being said, Sony also has the FX3, which is in a similar body. And it performed very well with the sensor that it has inside of it. So let's dive into what the Nikon can do with its current sensor and what I would like to see them do as far as a dedicated cinema camera is concerned. Taking the FX3 into consideration and the FX3, you're dealing with a box style camera. This camera is designed and laid out a little bit differently than you expect from most other hybrid cameras. The controls as you can see are on the top here. Of course, on the back side, you do have some additional controls and there is no EVF on this camera at all. What makes this camera great is that in addition to having a pretty good sensor for video recording, you can also get your audio handle, which comes with XLR connections, which allows you to plug in XLR mics. So this basically can improve the quality of your audio. Now this is a feature that most people don't think about because most of us typically put in a microphone on top of the camera if you're doing vlogging, if you're doing high level cinema work or mid-level. Sometimes you can get an external recorder, but it also means recording a sound guy to hold a boom mic. So that's like a whole other level of thing that you have to get and more equipment. What I like about what Nikon did with the Z9 and the Z8 is by sticking most of the things in the body, you have pretty decent quality coming out of the camera without the need for many external accessories. We have options. There's also the Tascam external audio handle. Well, it's not a handle, but external audio device that you can plug in a hot shoe, plug into the camera and get XLR connections. So there's some options out there. My wish for a compact cinema camera would start with something along this line. Now, bear with me here, let me explain this. When I look at what the Z8 can do, and I start to think, hmm, if we chop off the EVF, move some of the controls to the top, much like this camera has, you can make some space for a bigger screen around back, right? You can probably take some of these buttons and stick them inside a menu system, and you'll be fine with that. Up top here, there's a joystick. If you want to move around your um, focusing points, you can use this. You don't need to use this one in the back. Now in the Z8, you have a similar one, but imagine we've gotten rid of that little display we have up top, chop off the EVF, and now you pull some of these buttons up to the top. I've been asking for a four inch screen, five inch screen, something like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. That has a five inch screen which is pretty cool. But there's some things that camera lacks, such as in-body image stabilization, but there's something else that also has that most hybrid cameras don't have, and that is built-in ND filters. Now, I did think about maybe something like Panasonic box cameras, which, you know, is pretty cool, but then you have to put a monitor on it, you need a handle, and that just means more money is spent or, you know, at a cage. So that's spending more money 
out the box just to get started. If you already have cameras and have a monitor, then it, it's not a big deal because you're partially there. But if you don't have that and you want to make this your main video rig, you're starting out and you don't want to spend too much money. You don't want to have a screen at least on there, some kind of audio interface built in. So these are the things that I say, you know, this is a good starting point. If you want to have something small to carry around, well, maybe not too small. I started thinking the Z8 body size is pretty decent. If you look at these pictures, you can see that the FX30 is a bit smaller than the Z8. The Z8 is, is taller. The thickness is roughly the same, but the FX30 includes a fan. Now, do we need to put a fan in there? Typical for video work, for long sessions, it would be useful. While the Z9 can go up to two hours and change when it's recording, and the Z8 can do the same thing as well, it really depends on what kind of environment you're recording in. Having the power delivery port gives you an option to add external power, which is fantastic. The front of the camera, that area that you have for the um, focusing mode, a little button right there, get rid of that. They would need to change the body style somewhat. On the front, where you have that port for the remote, get rid of that, don't need it either. Do we need the function buttons up front? Probably not, because we're not doing a lot of things in our video that would require to program too much things inside there. Because in my mind, you can stick it in the screen. If we're putting everything in the screen, like on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, 6K cameras, you can eliminate all those buttons. You don't need all of that. So now that we've gotten rid of some of those items, what are we looking at? Mounting points. With the mounting points, you can add some additional accessories if you want to the camera. A cage, most people utilize it because it gives them more points as well. But, you know, in my mind, I've, I've never used the mounting points and I don't have a cage. And I think it, you'll be fine. But the cool thing with the Sony camera is that it does have a multi-function or rather multi-interface shoe. So you can plug the handle inside the show here and you can plug external mics inside the shoe and basically communicate directly with the camera. Shouldn't I can do something like that? I think it makes sense, but at the same time, there's something that kind of bugs me when we think about this stuff. If you're outside shooting in a situation, you don't want, you know, rain to start and then mess up your whole production. That would kind of suck. Now, if you use an external audio, you don't have to worry about that. But if you're a solo shooter and running around, you could have some issues and nobody wants that. So with that in mind, what do you guys think? I'm curious to hear those of you who are thinking about video, what you expect from Nikon and what you would like to see from Nikon in a video or cinema camera. Would the Z8 size body work for you or would you want them to do something bigger? Now, this is my take on what I think they should do. You know, there are cameras like the C200, the C500 range that Nikon could build something online or the FX6, FX9 from Sony if you really, really want to go to that professional level cinema camera. But I'm thinking, if you get something in this size, maybe, you know, not this size, because this is probably too tiny, and Nikon probably is not gonna shrink it that much, because again, the mount area for the sensor on this thing is like really tiny. So that wouldn't really work. With a Z mount, I think you would need to have a bigger body. The Z8 as a starting point, I think makes sense. And for making it compact without the EVF, I don't think they should shrink it anymore. If they did shrink it, definitely a fan would help. And then at that point, I'm thinking we're probably going to end up in a Z6, Z7 size body. At one point I thought maybe the Z30 body could work. I mean, that's an option, right? You could make it a little bit thicker, stick a fan on it and do that. But what I really would like them to do is drop the Z8, Z9 sensor inside that body. Give it better dynamic range. If they could tweak it some and give it a better ISO, um, low ISO, high ISO um, functionality for low noise, you know, I think that would work out very well. That being said though, I've shot the Z8 at nighttime, low light, and the image quality was fantastic. Full frame sensor, it looked really really good if nikon is smart they could do like sony 
and capitalized on this ZA Z9 sensor. Sony basically took that A7S3 sensor, put it in the FX3, the FR7, and now the ZVE1. So that's for camera. I think there's a fifth one out there, I can't recall the name of it. But that being said, even if it's four cameras utilizing that same one sensor, you know, Sony is basically making its money off of the sensor. Now, if Nikon did something similar and basically use the same sensor from the Z8 and Z9, take out the folder features, make it basically purely video, I think, you know, they could sell that camera. I don't know if you guys saw, there's been an event by Nikon where they invite a lot of content creator, people who do video. They didn't really advertise that, but some videos have been coming out from some content creators that I've never heard of, never seen videos from them on YouTube that have been shooting videos with a Nikon at an event and they really like it. So for most of us who are photographers and are dabbling in video, we know that this is pretty decent, but for those people who do video mainly, they're excited about what Nikon can bring for them. When I talk about a screen, we, we can't have no more just tilt our screen. It's got to flip forward. We, we need that. That's a big thing. In addition to having it being a four inch screen or five inch or somewhere around there, or have whatever it can make it happen. I think it's a good thing. Nikon bezel that I've measured myself on the screen, diagonally is four inches. This Sony screen, let's look at this for a second. This is basically bezel less. It's almost like you have one of those frameless mirrors and Volvos. Now when you turn on the screen, certainly, you basically are not utilizing the full space of the screen, which, you know, it's not a big deal. But if you have four inches, you have more stuff to play with, right? So I think if my cam make the effort to make full use of that screen area and get rid of the big um, borders and the big uh, bezel area around it, that would be pretty cool. You maybe get maybe 3.5, 3.6, well, I think maybe 3.6 to 3.7, the 3.8 inch screen. But if they can keep it at four inches, full diagonal across like that, without the you know, the big border around it, I think that'll be fantastic. It can be done. You know, having an A7R5 and a 7X30, they use this pretty similar size screen. Now there's certain video tools that I think would be very good to have inside the camera. Things like waveform, vector scope, false colors. I know Canon basically put it in one of the cameras. I think two of them now has certain of those features built into the screen. If Nikon can do this, I think that'd be great because you know, you're making it a video uh, focused camera. If they go in the same vein of saying, hey, we cannot give you everything inside the body. You don't have to buy extra screen if you don't need to. I think that's fantastic. One other thing I'd like to see them do on the screen is make it an HDR screen. Our phones are HDR, well, at least my iPhone is, and a lot of the phones out there have HDR screens. Now, I do understand that when you put an HDR screen in, that means you're using more battery life, so that's something you have to consider. So, you know, something at least close to it, if they can work it out where it doesn't drain the battery life, or can we put a new battery that has a high capacity in the same size of the e and EL15, that would work. I think that would make sense, but again, if you're shooting for a long period of time and you have that power delivery port, you're good as far as power is concerned. If you're hand holding it and you're running around, an extra battery would be fine. So that's my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments area. I'm very curious to hear from you guys and your thoughts. Those of you who do video, because I know most photo people are not thinking about this stuff. A lot of you guys who watch my channel are on the photo side, but some of you are also thinking about video. So I'd like to hear your thoughts as well. And what do you think Nikon can do as a video focused camera? Something that you could do specifically in that line without having any photo features inside of it. Is there something that appeals to you? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And when you finish watching the video, give it a thumbs up. I have links inside the description area for camera gear if you're interested in buying something. Utilize the link. I get a small commission from Amazon. I'm an Amazon affiliate now, so I would appreciate it if you guys could help out the channel by utilizing the link to purchase any gear that you want. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.